Hello. Hi. Welcome to Unitary Designation. Today I wanted to make a video about something that is very um, important today. It's very much in the news and um, <clears throat> the threat of it looms rather largely for our, demo for our democracy and for, our, for all our democracies. I wanted to talk about right-wing extremism and um, I should be I should specify that I'm not talking about conservative uh, voters or people who have a you know a, a right-wing mindset like there's a place as I've said in my earlier videos there's a place on the political spectrum for you know many voices but uh, extremism is not that it's different it's something else and um why talk about this well it's it has its risks there's obviously people who feel very strongly about certain things in these topics but i felt like it was important to just be clear and denounce it because it's um the way i see it is that it's an evil um a philosophical evil and a psychological evil and a, a yeah a theological and ethical and moral evil that is threatening to show to rear its ugly head and I felt like it was worth putting down a few words on so um I've done some rudimentary, so, you know, let's get into it. <clears throat> I've done some rudimentary thinking on mm, on right-wing extremism. Um, and I mean extremism, I mean attitudes that are outside um, any kind of sociocultural norms that we would consider acceptable. Like, the original... My starting position on this is that um, we should be tolerant for opinions and um, interpretations and, you know, points of view that are not our own. But we have to draw the line somewhere with our tolerance. And <clears throat> in a democracy, the place where you should draw the line is with intolerance. You cannot show tolerance towards intolerance because... Tolerance, uh, intolerance in and, in and of itself has the axiomatic inbuilt assumption that they're not tolerant for a multiplicities, multiplicity of views. So, yes, we should listen to people who think that culture might be moving too fast in one direction. We should be tolerant to people who feel... Uh, fiscally conservative that you know government spending might be high and you know all these sorts of like um, nuanced and you know democratic processes that we should be uh, leave alone but extremism is when they attempt to destroy the process of free speech free engagement free uh, discussion of all points of view when they're when you say it's my way or the highway, you're in the extremism camp. And that goes for all, you know, any direction you'd like to point to. Um, Right-wing extremism is very... It's, it's in, a, in a sense, it's hard for me to talk about because it's so wrong. It's so e evil that it feels almost like... Yeah, it's something that's not pleasant to even bring up or conceptualize. But I think that speaking out loud against what you consider to be wrong has its place. And, well, this is that place. So, um, yeah, so the central values that I feel and that I sort of live my life according to are um, principles of love and unity and working together and 
seeing everything as sort of seeing everything as trying to fulfill its highest potential it's a very growth oriented uh, approach a very as aristotelian theological perspective that everything that is is trying to reach its highest potential and it's prevented from that by well life <laughs> but that doesn't give you any reason or excuse to stop and the way i the way right wing extremism again separating it from you know just conservative values the way that the, the extremism presents itself to me is that it's a it's a a demonic desire to stop trying it's the rejection of the responsibility of being um being always presents itself with new challenges every day and i my level of analysis on right wing extremism is that it's born out of a resentment towards that it's born out of a resentment to trying to participate engagefully with the world in a way that seems like they've been damaged to a point where they don't want to help being anymore they want to put everything into i'm talking about the extremist actors on the right the extremist actors on the right seem to want to put everything into boxes that they feel cognitively comfortable with uh and they the autonomy of the people put into the boxes be damned so it's very authoritarian and it's very demonic in a sense because it it doesn't represent the acceptance of every man woman every human being created equal it 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 spits in the face of that and says that it's you have to live according to our values and i just find that to be so luciferian because lucifer the fallen angel according to the mythology put the intellect as above god it put he put reason and logic as sort of axiomatic foundational values that were higher than um well something above the confines of logic and reason and you don't have to believe in a creator deity but clearly our human ability to map the universe is uh, limited and to think that you have all the answers is a a common trap and a dangerous one and it seems to correlate well with according to the research literature it seems to correlate well with iq um people with high iq tend to have an ability to form higher resolution cognitive uh, maps of the world like you you are able to encompass reality inside the framework that your neurology is able to produce and when a framework when you encounter a framework that you cannot encompass you tend to reject it as you know any rationale will do but you know wish wash or you know too complicated or outside my league and you tend to be resentful that's why you often see um a kind of anti intellectualism um tradition going with the um far the far right and the extremists and i'm not saying that right wingers are dumb because they're not many of the most intelligent people have right wing leanings i'm obviously talking about extremism um the american philosopher terence mckenna called the sort of conspiracy theories that are prevalent on the extremism front for epistemological cartoons so epistemological epistemology philosophically speaking is the study of knowledge how you know things what is knowledge what's the difference between an opinion and knowledge fact and knowledge what is it to know right if 
what you know can change, did you know it, these sorts of philosophical questions. And the realities, the narratives that the extremists are spinning seem to be of the, they seem to be of such a complicit, uh, simplicity that they mirror cartoons more than they mirror um, complicated pictures or, you know, high resolution images of the world. Like, I'm not going to say them out loud to dignify them with that, but, you know, faction X controls everything. Or, uh, you know, uh, um, population group Y controls everything. Like, these are two... They're, they're cartoons. Like, they're epistemological cartoons. They're so simple and so... limited in their ability to map and conceptualize and explain that to grab onto them wholeheartedly in your attempt to make what you perceive as, you know, correct values, I, I, it's... See, the part of the problem with responding to extremism is that it's so conceptually uh, flawed. It's so unreasoned out. So a lot of the... A lot of the heavy lifting, philosophically speaking, hasn't been done. It's more about blaming others for uh, societal shortcomings. Like, you won't find any extremist who say, we should take personal responsibility, um, we should try harder, we should increase our resolution uh, on the problem-solving map. What you will find is a lot of people who blame others and who say that we would be better off without... Yes. Well, best not to finish that. Um, yeah, so the way I see it is that those that kind of thinking is an affront to the psychedelic truths that people who engage with psychedelic um, experiences report and spiritual truths that, you know, all is one and that, you know, um, love yourself as you love your neighbor, love your neighbor as you love yourself, um, surrender, selflessness, now, 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 right? It's it's an affront to all of that. And it spits in the face of this unity, this deep sense of longing for unity that humans have. And that can go too far, obviously, and we all have separate homes and we all have, you know, our cars and all that. I'm obviously not talking about a complete derision of all borders, but the extremists on the right side of the spectrum, far, far, far right, are so obsessed with borders. And that may be due to developmental reasons, that may be due to psychological trauma, that may be due to low IQ and extreme personality dispositions, but the point is it's 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 wrong and ironically the the biggest strength of humanity is diversity like we're a very diverse and ad adaptable species and the problem with that diversity is that we sometimes get people who are s not tolerant like it's within our human the hu spectrum of human potentials to be extremely non-tolerant and yeah well that's why freedom of speech is so important because when those kind of noises are heard we can correct we can give them corrective feedback and say you know no but if we never hear them talk then we can never shut them down so you know um specifics about right-wing extremism well it seems to be paired with a metaphysical uh framework okay so here's an here's a note i'm for diversity of religion i'm for diversity in general i'm very much for every country working together and i'm also very for a um cooperative approach to 
existence. I think hum humanity has to come together to confront the future. But that doesn't mean that we should make away with borders. And it also doesn't mean that, you know, I'm not advocating for any social or economic system. I'm for freedom of religion. I'm, I, de I defend everyone's right to believe what they feel is the right way to God or to the transcendent or just to ethics. Um, you know, I don't have to mention any specific religions. I'm, I'm pretty much for all of them. It bothers me, the areas where certain religions promote intolerance, but, you know, that's not my place to uh, comment. What worries me is that a certain religion, Christianity, that I f think is very a very sophisticated religion, a very theologically deep religion, and a, um, a religion whose narratives I often use in my level of analysis on the world. You know, the whole uh, original sin, the fall of man, the developing of self-consciousness, the, the expulsion from this sort of Garden of Eden, the... Uh, you know, the idyllic state that the early proto-hominids enjoyed, the development of self-consciousness as we developed, you know, we ate fruits, we developed higher order brain cognitive um, capacities. I find these and the narratives that the early human tribes developed, the Abrahamic stories, they're uh, foundational to the way our species has evolved intellectually and historically and, and conceptually. How we frame the world is encased within religious frameworks. So I, I find that very interesting as a field of study. But the extremists on the right tend to use a perverted and, and unsophisticated form of Christianity as a sort of sword. And they also tend to play the victim and use and justify their use of the sword as a yeah as a response to you know being victims so an example would be you can't get a medical procedure because it interferes with what I think should be right for you, and that's If you have an opinion about ethics, it's okay to refer to religion, but it's not okay to circumvent the debate by using force. And part of what makes the right wing so dangerous and so wrong, in my opinion, is that they use force and they use shoddy conceptual work and they often blame others and you know you don't have to be long on the internet to hear discussions that are unsettling uh, in terms of uh, right-wing values uh, extremist right-wing values and it's it's concerning because these there's something about these ideologies that seem to appeal to men and specifically young men or lonely men and that's a big problem because as young men drop out of traditional institutions like academics or school and suffer unemployment and other forms of personal hardships, they tend to gravitate towards these all-encompassing pathologies of order, these sort of totalitarian styles of thinking. Everything has simple, identifiable um, causes. My um, shortcomings, my hardship is not my own doing or something that is on me to solve and the way to bring about the required ethical change is through you know dysfunctional political activation and it's it's very it's it's horrible pr for for young men because what they're lacking is guidance and what we end up seeing in them is this terrible danger that they could potentially pose and then that sort of becomes a self-fulfilling loop 
where because we project that onto them, they get more radicalized and more shunned and more ostracized and thus more radicalized. And and there's there's good research on this, and we've seen this. And um, and the truth is that everyone is, you know, sort of trying their best, and uh, we're all in this together. And we all have suffering, and sometimes the suffering is too much, and sometimes we join political or religious or you know just straight up cults to sort of deal with that suffering but nothing excuses extremism nothing and I just wanted to say it because it needs to be said that it's it's not going to help you the societies that you would potentially erect like to construct bring about wouldn't be good not for you nor for the people who came after you. And the explanatory models that all your misfortunes are caused by ethnic group X or, you know, social class Y, it's it's too simple. It's nice to have a simple explanatory model that sort of encompasses everything. It's very comforting. But just because it's comfortable doesn't make it true. So, um, yeah, I just, I just wanted to speak out because some, it's easy to critique the left side of the cultural political spectrum when they sort of play with categories that we don't have a replacement for. Um, but that doesn't mean that that doesn't give you leeway to forsake your own ethical responsibility of development and sort of join forces with people who want truly terrible things. Um, you know, critique is always one thing, but what would you impose as a solution? That would be a good question to ask. And then when you see the kind of people that operate on these fringes and you see the opinions they hold and you try to think about what kind of societies they would erect it's very wrong it's 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 morally wrong it like it infringes on a certain sense of the divinity of of the individual the sanctity of the individual um things that are theological things that are existential um that within every man is a sense of the ultimate sense of the transcendent um, and that yeah the, the whole thing the whole extremism thing is a f shift of focus from your life and a cultural level of analysis and the truth of the matter is that your life functions within the confines of a culture and you should never stop trying to improve the culture but you always have to start with yourself and if you wake up or if you're motivated by hate and anger you know the buddha said that uh, holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die it's not going to work and it, it might fuel you in the short term but it'll eat your soul up in a way that's not pretty and you won't recognize who you become and it takes less than you'd think to get there there's more the Jungian shadow is large within all of us and you know it's it's easier to go down that road the luciferian ego intellectual road of looking at iq or you know whatever kind of statistics you want to bring out and it's easy to forget the ethical it's easy to forget the forget the love. I mean, the end of all wisdom is love, love, love. And philosophy is the pursuit of wisdom. And there's not a thing in the world that isn't motivated to grow and to flourish and to express themselves and to wish for to wish for the destruction of that or the halting of other people's growth because you can't keep up, it's it's not a road you want to go down. Resentment and and jealousy and spite is not 
it's wrong. Full stop. It's just wrong. Other, there, the famine mindset of that is so prevalent and it's so juvenile and it's so unsophisticated. Other people are doing well, so that reflects poorly on me? No. No, you responding poorly to other people's success reflects poorly on you. That's the, uh, to use the terminology of the far right, that's the uh, beta move, is to react like a bitch and complain that other people are successful. Good for them. They're successful. That doesn't reduce your chances to be I mean, more successful people means more people have time, effort, and energy to promote your work. And famine mindset, man, it's it's dismal. So, yeah, you don't have to de- like. It, this doesn't have to define be defined as an intellectual issue, but it does have to be defined as at least an ethical one. And if you won't do it for the love of being or for the love of yourself or your fellow man you should do it because it's because it's right because we are all in this together and no one gets to go home before the work is done and Like, we need you. Everyone needs each other to be the best they can be and to contribute. And to want to confine being, being will resist you. It it will resist your efforts to confine it. The harder the right pushes, the harder harder the left will push back. And the harder the left pushes, the harder the right will push back. We have to learn to coexist. But that means that the forces on the extremes have to be de-radicalized. Because the only way we come together is through love. And yeah, that's pretty much what I had to say about that. Um, I wanted to, now in summary, I wanted to express how Right-wing extremism is morally, ethically, theologically, uh, you know, just um, physically, like the body responds to it as wrong. There's a reason why it feels, there's a slight sense of guilt in indulging in this kind of like, these kind of epistemological cartoons, like, oh, group X is causing everything. If you're, if you're sensitive, you can sort of feel or taste that guilt feeling, like, oh, I'm not actually supposed to like, just indulge that. And yeah. Yeah, so. So yes, um, that there is a limit. And the limit goes at extremism, uh, intolerance, and uh, hate. Essentially, if you're fueled by hate, there's you, you need to wake up to that. Um, okay, I just needed to make my thoughts clear on that. Because on this channel, we, we will go into depth on political matters and existential matters and uh, psychological matters and all sorts of things. And I just needed to say it in no uncertain terms that the right the extremism end of the right wing is it's not tenable it's in its own internal logic is not functional if if the, if it was to be put into play it wouldn't work it's wrong ethically and it also wouldn't logically work that kind of narrow authoritarian restrictive autonomy destroying controlling force wouldn't motivate people you could never erect a system that would make you feel the way you think you should feel that always comes from inside no matter what system you you erect so yeah okay that was the that was the video thanks for watching unitary designation and i hope to see you next time goodbye